please join me in welcoming a woman who became my dear friend last year when we uh, were both on a plenary at the Harm Reduction Coalition. It was the first time they'd ever done a plenary of all women of color and there too, for the first time, three or four different languages spoken from that panel. It was extraordinary and it spoke to how worldwide our movement is, how diverse we are, we're a multinational, multicultural, multi-gender, multi-age, intergenerational movement, and we all deserve to have our voices heard. And today, from the mighty Navajo Nation, we're gonna hear from Dr. Crystal Lee. Hello, my name is Crystal and I'm born and raised on the Navajo Reservation as an indigenous person here in the U.S. And I want to point out that keeping our language is the ultimate resistance. It is a blessing and honor to recognize my ancestors so I can be sitting here on this stage as a full-blooded Navajo, knowing my culture, as a doctor, giving back to my people. Because of all the genocide, of all the cultural assimilation, all the oppression that my people have experienced for centuries. Uh, my, well, my points come from an indigenous perspective on health and healing. Um, as a research doctor, a lot of my work incorporates language and culture. As a native person, we have a very special relationship and our connectedness to how we view and see and identify with the world around us. It's very important when it comes to health and healing and all disparities in our communities that we first recognize our strengths in our own people. Yeah. With that, I would like to highlight a form of how we view indigenous justice. Prior to colonization, we would oftentimes acknowledge that if a person commits an act of violence and so forth, that they are not considered in balance with themselves. So it was our job and our duty as a community to help them rebalance themselves. And that comes from a very physical, spiritual, mental, emotional, social, and environmental element. Therefore, I'm happy to state that a lot of our tribes are now combining the hybrid of health and healing with indigenous justice. For example, the Yukon population in Alaska have a very formal process. They have a committee a community justice committee where they, they talk to the offender. They have both healing circles for both the offender and the victim. Everyone convenes after to talk about the process of the next steps of how to penalize, if that should be the case, the offender. Through that process, once they determine the nature of what the offender needs to go through, they keep a follow-up measurements to ensure that his healing process is a success. 
this is a small model of an indigenous framework on how we can better and effectively do the jobs that we do in our communities. Thank you. Say ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Crystal, for reminding us that restorative justice is a possibility. Not every nation on this planet has prisons. We should begin to imagine a world beyond punishment, a world beyond shame, and a world that's in balance and guided by love. It is possible. It does exist. Thank you, Crystal.